Come home to Jesus. This is the message that Max Solbrecken has proclaimed for 50 years to multitudes across the world. His crusades have taken him to the Hindus of India, Muslims of Pakistan, Buddhists of Sri Lanka, voodoo worshippers of Haiti, Catholics of Malta, and headhunters of northern Luzon. He has preached God's Word in stadiums, churches, tents, universities, and prisons. He comes to you today with the message of God's love and power. The man who is not afraid to preach the truth, Pastor Max Solbrecken. I wish to read from St. Luke's Gospel, the second chapter, and we'll read from verse number one as follows in Jesus' name. It came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth in the Judea, out of the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David. And to be taxed with Mary, the spouse's wife, being great with child, and so it was, that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. To all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, a Redeemer, a Liberator, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, Jesus. He is Christ the Lord. True God from eternity and true man by the virgin birth. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill unto men. And it came to pass, as the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Shall we bow for prayer? Father, thank you. Thank you for this great story, this true story, this great happening. Thank you for this miracle of Jesus, the Savior, the virgin birth, the glory of God coming down. God visiting the earth. Thank you, Lord. I pray now a special blessing upon every man and woman and child here at the house of prayer. I was 623. South of New Scripture. And for the multitudes who hear this over the YouTube, somewhere across the world, I pray a blessing upon them all. We pray this for Christ's sake and for God's glory with much thanksgiving. And in Jesus' name, and everyone, would you shout a great big amen. amen. Slip up your hands and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And you may be seated, please. I had planned this morning to bring a message entitled The Genealogy of Our Savior. A heavy-duty theological message. So powerful in my heart. So powerful. But last night God spoke to me and said, no, don't bring that message now. Preach on Christ our joy. Christ our joy. This is a joyous time of the year. 
it's just the great truth about the Holy Spirit coming upon the Virgin Mary. The baby in her womb was the Savior. And here we have the story about Joseph and Mary going down to Bethlehem and and how that she brought forth this beautiful baby. And at the same time, there were shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone run upon them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said, don't be afraid. Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Say, great joy. Great joy. joy. A Savior has been born. These shepherds were lowly shepherds. Why would the angels come to the shepherds? Because Jesus is the great shepherd. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. The shepherds were the first to hear this great message. And the Bible says, Lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were very afraid. The angel said, Don't be afraid. You don't need to be afraid. Fear thou not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but the world through him might be saved world. Go ye in all the world, Mark 16. Go ye in all the world and preach my gospel unto every creature. Go and take my gospel. Go to the ends of the earth and share the good news. The good news that a Savior has been born. A Savior. Savior Christ our Lord. Christ the anointed one. Our Lord, God, true God from eternity, but he came down, incarnated God in human flesh, the miracle, such a miracle. Can you understand it? Of course not. How could you understand it? But like Martin Luther said, the Bible is true. You may not understand it, but believe it. Anyway, it's true. Jesus believed the Bible. He walked among men. He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. When he used those words, the devil fled. Back off, devil. It is written. I shall worship the Lord thy God. Him only shall thou serve. He quoted a scripture about Noah. He said, as it was in the days of Lot, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the day of the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. She turned to look back. Jesus quoted scriptures about David. People say to me, why do you believe the Bible is true? Well, there are hundreds of reasons why. I've studied theology all my life, and I know The answers, but the main reason I believe the Bible is true is because Jesus Christ believed it. If he believed the Bible was true, there's no one greater than Jesus Christ. This gospel is going to be brought to all people everywhere. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Great joy which shall be to all people, not just Jews, but Gentiles. Oh, when I first began in the ministry, I thought I would just preach in Canada. I was a businessman, and God called me and prepared me. Six years later, I was ready to preach and bought an old gospel tent, an old... old, uh, army tent 
three great big telephone poles, 45 feet high, big canvas tent that the Army had used. And we had tremendous meetings. Surrey, British Columbia, Edmonton, Alberta, Winnipeg. It was powerful. And then I was in Calgary. 1965, preaching in the, in the large auditorium there in Calgary. It was a small church that had backed us, and so they asked me to come on a Sunday morning. In the Jubilee, would be in the evening, in the afternoon. But this church asked me to come in the morning, and all of a sudden, the power of God came down upon us, and a, a woman spoke in tongues, pastor's wife, Mildred Tretwell. And she said, there are people, there are many people in a land far away, and they're lost. And if someone goes to them with the message of Jesus Christ, they will be lost. It touched my heart. We're all praying. And then there came another powerful utterance in the spirit, in tongues, other tongues. And then the interpretation, it was stronger still. It said that there's people are will be doomed forever unless someone goes to them. But this time I was shaking. I fell to my knees and I was crying. I said, oh my God, don't let them be lost. I did not know, but all around people were on their knees. And I was crying unto God. All of a sudden I heard the voice of God. Not in my ears, but in my spirit. It was like the voice came from eternity. It came through the Grand Canyon. And then it came and narrowed down and into my belly area. And my whole body heard the voice of God. I said, son, I'm changing your ministry. I said, Lord, that'll be good. Anything you do for me will be good. And then just like that, he said, I send you to the heathen. I said, but Lord, how? Where? What must I do? He just spoke to my spirit. So powerfully. He told me, call Lester Summerall. I called him and he said, Brother Max, of course, I'll set up some meetings for you. In Hong Kong, in the Philippine Islands. And then I there was a Canadian missionary in India and I and he heard about my ministry and he called me, Lawson Barber, come to India. Within a little while, I had arranged three and a half months. We started in, in Hong Kong and in Japan. I preached in Japan. And then Philippine Islands, that's where the revival broke through. It was so strong. A little boy that had polio and his right leg was 12 or 15 inches shorter than the other one. Sal Morrisegan. Mother was Josephine Gudula, Roman Catholics. Place was filled there. We won 1,100 souls in 26 days and put into the church 1,100 souls. One night, there's a woman, she's carrying his boy. She was so poor. She didn't have crutches and she didn't have a wheelchair. And she said, Here, heal my son. I said, What are you saying, your son? can't heal anybody. She said, all my neighbors are getting healed. I said, no, if they're getting healed, I'm not doing it. Jesus Christ is doing it. Well, then she said, ask Jesus to do it. I said, no, you're, you're not, you don't even know what this is all about. You know nothing about this. 
I can't heal him and you don't have any faith. And I don't have any faith. You go on back home and fast and pray for three days. Read the gospel according to John. Come back and see me. She left very angry. It's because I'm a Catholic. He won't pray for me. And something said to her, no, it's not because you're a Catholic. All your friends are Catholics. And they've got healed. And then the Holy Spirit said to her, what he asked was not so difficult. Just fast and pray. In those days, Catholics fasted on Friday. So they knew about fasting. And then she came back with him. And she said, Pastor, Sal and I did not know anything about this, but now we know we need to be born again. We've been reading the gospel according to St. John. Well, I said, come and heal right now. And she said, even if God doesn't heal him, we want to be saved. So I knelt with them and we prayed. And there was about 600 people in the service that night. I took, put him on the communion table. Sitting there on the communion table, his leg, one leg, 12 or 15 inches shorter than the other one. It was like a piece of wood. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I command now this leg to be made whole in Jesus' name. People began to shout, but I was praying. I didn't see it, but the leg began to jump up and down and out and out and out. And there he was. I took him and put him on his feet before 600 people or more. Some say there were more than that there that night. And then I walked away and the mother went to a study and I said, don't touch him. <laughs> I said, God sealed him. I took him, put him down. Kind of a little dumb. I slapped him on the behind and said, run. How can you run when you haven't even stood before? <laughs> so he walked and ran and fell down and walked and ran. And within 15 minutes, he was walking well. 100 people from their distant relatives, their close relatives and also extended family were saved. 100 people joined the church. His uncle Conrad became a great preacher in New York City. Go in all the world, he said. Here the angel says it's going to be for all people. I like that. All people. Father, he was born this day in the city of David as the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign. Unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. No room for him in the inn. He's born in a stable. I told the story before here, but I'll tell it again how that a Baptist preacher was preaching in, on television. I don't know his name. This was years and years ago when President John F. Kennedy was the president of the USA. This woman was Rose Kennedy, the mother of the president. She was watching TV. Some preacher, I don't know, no, no name preacher. I wouldn't recognize him. You wouldn't. But he was talking about Jesus being born in a, in a manger. And he said that you that are listening, he wants to come into the manger of your heart. <laughs> Let Jesus come and be born in you. And Rose Kennedy knelt and said, Jesus, I don't understand this, but you can come into the manger, into my heart. She writes this Baptist preacher, says, I asked Jesus to come into the manger of my heart. She said, I'm born again. Manger of your heart. For he was born this day in the city of David as Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts 
praising God and saying, Glory to God from the highest, and earth, peace, goodwill unto men. And it came to pass as the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go even now. Let's go. They had seen something supernatural. Let's go to Bethlehem. And there they found him, Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying. The angel said, it's going to be great joy. I've got a message of great joy. Christmas time is a time of great joy. Because the Savior was born almost 2,000 years ago. And he is Christ the Lord. He's the one who came out of his own and his own received him not. But as many as receive him to them gives you the power to become sons of God. In the book of Isaiah, the 12th chapter, the Bible speaks about this great joy. This great joy. And in that day, thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, that anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. This gospel is a happy, blessed, joyful thing. It says we draw water of the wells of salvation with joy. The wells of salvation. Jesus met a woman at the well. And he said, if you'll trust me, I will give you living water. Living water. It'll bubble up unto life eternal. An artesian well of water. Joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We're strong if we have Jesus. We're strong because he gives us joy. Hallelujah. And in John's gospel, the seventh chapter, it says there that if you believe in me, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. An artesian well when you trust him. And you're born again when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. The well turns into rivers flowing out to others. Rivers. Romans chapter 14 tells us about the kingdom of God. Verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Precious Jesus. Let's go to the 14th chapter now, verses 17 and 18. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not you can't eat this or you can't drink that. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy and joy and joy and joy in the Holy Ghost. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Like the Seventh-day Adventists, you cannot eat pork. or You've got to go to church on the Saturday. All these things, they get confused in little things to mean nothing. The main thing is to be saved and born again and filled with the Holy Ghost and be filled with joy and spread that joy to others. Someone shout hallelujah. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it is righteousness and peace 
and joy in the Holy Ghost. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Can you say hallelujah? The joy of the Lord. We need the joy. In Luke 15, it says, verse 7, that if you win a soul to Christ, the angels in heaven, they'll be rejoicing. Oh, this is, when I read this the first time, I said, Lord, what has this got to do with the angels? I know people get saved and get full of joy, and we rejoice when a soul is born again. It's in Luke 15, and verse number 7. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner. When you got saved, then the angels rejoice. Marcus, when you got saved, the angels rejoiced. Don, the angels rejoiced, Don, one and two. Can you say hallelujah? I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. Over the 99 who already are saved. Jesus Christ wants us to win souls. He wants to reach the dying and the lost and the fearful and deliver them. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1. This is so marvelous when we think of this. Jesus Christ comes into our hearts. He comes and lives within us. 1 Peter chapter 1. It says here, there might be a trial of faith that you go through. Verse 7. The trial of your faith being much more precious than of the gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found on the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. When you go through a trial, it seems bad to you, but it's even good for you. It makes you stronger. And it says, When Christ shall appear, whom having not seen ye love, in whom, though ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. We rejoice with joy unspeakable. So much joy you can't contain it. So much joy. It has to come out. I remember when I was a commercial traveler from the Cormac Bissey Company. I traveled Prince George to Prince Rupert. Up halfway to Dawson Creek, down at Williams Lake, 100 mile house. Sometimes we'd be in a prayer meeting, and when I come in the morning to greet my customers at Safeway or some little, some little shop, little grocery store, I felt like saying hallelujah when I'd come in. I said, hello, how are you? Joy, joy. Joy, joy, joy. We need the joy. We need the joy. Someone say praise the Lord. Praise Romans 15 talks about a God of hope. Romans 15. Verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with what? With all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now he is the God of hope. Our God is a God of hope. He fills us with joy and peace. In believing. And we abound in hope. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. He said I myself also am persuaded of you my brethren. That you also are full of goodness. Filled with knowledge. All knowledge able to admonish others. The God of hope. You meet people and say, how are you? Oh, not so good. How are you? Oh, not so bad. My brother Emo went preaching in the U.S. of A. He and Jane in the deep south for about 15 years they traveled. And he'd say, how are you? Oh, just fine, brother. I'm just fine. How are you? 
we're just fine. I'm just fine. If that would have been a cat, oh, not so bad. I don't know if they were fine or not, but he said it was sure different. <laughs> we need some of that southern sunshine. <laughs> Full of joy. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Let's go back to verse 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith. I remember your work of faith, your labor of love, and patience of hope. In the Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God our Father. Verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost with much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction. They were persecuted with joy of the Holy Ghost. I've seen some of the poorest people in the world. I've seen people in the most terrible conditions as I've traveled the world. But when they get saved and they get the Holy Ghost, they're so full of joy and they just worship and praise God. He said, and you became followers of us, of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, but you received it with joy of the Holy Ghost. And from you sounded out the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord was sounded out. You went and preached the gospel everywhere you went. You carried the joy with you. There's power with you. And there's peace with you. Everywhere you went, people were changed. The gospel was sounded out. It was preached. It was projected. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. In much assurance, he became followers of us, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. For from you was sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia, Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God's word is spread abroad. So we need not to speak of anything. For they themselves show of the manner of entering in we had unto you. How ye turned to God from idols to serve the living God. They turned from their idols to Christ. And to wait for his son in the rapture. They waited then, and we're waiting now. He's coming. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. Jesus is coming soon. Oh, he's coming soon. He's coming soon. Psalm 94. 19 tells you how to get rid of your anxiety. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. You delight my soul, Lord. You delight my soul. Oh, to delight. Psalm 95, oh, come thou, sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let's come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise with the psalms for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Come, let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Be thankful and make a joyful noise. Why? Psalm 96, declare his glory among the heathen. His wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. And then I'm going to close with John 16, verse 22. 
And ye now therefore have sorrow. He was leaving his disciples and they were sorrowful. They didn't want him to leave. But he had to leave. Ye now therefore have sorrow. I will see you again. I will see you again. Your heart shall rejoice. In your joy. No man taketh from you. He's gone. But we'll see him again. We'll see him. He came back. After he rose from the dead. They saw him again. Did our hearts not burn within us? They said, as he walked with us on the way, he did come back. And they saw him. And then he went away, and then he sent the Holy Spirit. And he came in the Holy Spirit. We're waiting for him. We want him to come. We're waiting. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The Spirit and the bride say, come. Whosoever will, let him come and drink of that water of life freely. Behold, I come quickly. 1977, there was a little Indian village in Manitoba. And in that little Indian village, there was a preacher. And they were having a conference in a tent, summer conference. And this man's wife, his name was Catherine Harper. Alan B. Harper was the pastor of the Missionary Alliance Church. And they'd all gathered for this convention. And Catherine Harper was washing clothes. Red Sucker Lake, Manitoba. She took the wet clothing in a basket and was carrying it out Side to hang it on a line, a close line. The grass was quite high. She was walking towards that close line, and all of a sudden she heard a loud noise. It sounded like a low flying jet aircraft. She looked up, my God. She saw a cloud that was as white as glistening, whiter than snow, and the cloud was rolling, coming down. Towards her, she was scared half to death. She threw the basket down and she headed for the house. She only made two or three steps and all of a sudden a stranger stood before her. White and glistening, wrapped in clouds. She almost, almost died with fright. The stranger said, Jesus is coming soon. All those who are ready when he comes, they will go with him. Those who are not ready will not go. They will suffer terribly. None will be spared. Jesus coming soon. Those who are not ready will be left behind. Those who are left behind will perish. And just like that, it was gone up. She fell down on her face, on her side, I guess. Her daughter, Eileen, Mary daughter, came to see her mother, and she didn't see her. She saw the washing machine. She walked outside. Mother, where are you? She walked towards the close line, and she saw her in the high grass. 
she said, Mother, Mother! She saw her lips moving. She knelt down and tried to listen, Mother, are you okay? She said, I have seen an angel. She said, Mother, are you able to get up? I have no strength. So Catherine ran next door and got a neighbor, and they carried her into the house. Then sent word out to Pastor Alan B. Harper. And all the preachers came into the room. She was lying on the bed, and she was speaking very slowly. And then she began to get more strength. And she said, I have seen an angel. He said, Jesus is coming soon. All those who are not ready will be left behind. They will all perish. And as she was telling the story, the power of God came and all those preachers fell on the floor like they were dead. For three days and three nights, she never slept. She preached. For three days and three nights, she preached. Word went to other villages, and they came from everywhere to Red Sucker Lake, Manitoba. And a revival broke loose. Jesus is coming. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, be and abide with each one until Jesus comes. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. Be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The Lord strengthen thee. The Lord heal thee. Prosper thee. Give thee peace, protect thee, and fill thee with joy. In Jesus' name. For 50 years, Pastor Max Solbrecken has awakened the conscience of his audiences through the anointed proclamation of the claims of Christ who said, No man can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. The truth is, you are either for him or against him. You cannot remain neutral. Great costs are involved in spreading of Christ's gospel. Please consider investing in this ministry. Contact Max Solbrecken at MSWM, Box 44220, RPO, Garside, Edmonton, Alberta, T5V1N6, Canada. You have been watching the Come Home to Jesus television ministry with Canada's preacher man, Dr. Max Solbrecken, who has proclaimed the Word of God across the world for 50 years without fear or favor of man or devil. Ask for Canada's revival magazine, The Cry of His Coming, when you write. Invest in souls by supporting this end-time ministry. Please contact Max Solbrecken at MSWM, Box 44220, RPO Garside, Edmonton, Alberta, T5V1N6, Canada. Oh, die again.